How could the FBI have gotten this so wrong? Hi, hello and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be talking about the very real 21st century witch hunt that takes place in America and is hurting Chinese people. Imagine for a moment that you have dedicated your entire life to the pursuit of science. You've relocated your life and your wife to another country in order to pursue your dream of being a, one of the leading academics in your field and then you find yourself terminated from your position. Accused of espionage, charged with 10 felony counts, prosecuted by the country that you called home until just a few weeks ago and thought had made you welcome impoverished by legal fees as well as being fired from your job. This is exactly what happened to Franklin Tao. But he wasn't alone. He was only the most high-profile case than more than 20 Chinese academics who were picked up and charged during the Trump era's China initiative. Let us be clear about something. Whatever we might have seen or heard or read in Western media, not one of them was accused, charged or ever convicted of spying. This wasn't a case of a spying. This had nothing to do at all with national security. It wasn't even about intellectual property theft. This was just a witch hunt leading to the destruction of their lives. The Department of Justice started this witch hunt in 2018 and gave it what even a former chief of counterintelligence described as an inflammatory moniker, the China Initiative. Tao Feng, also known as Franklin Tao, is a chemical engineer. Well, he's now an unemployed chemical engineer, but he was completely exonerated from his charges. The allegation against him was that he had ties to China and he had failed to disclose them. But of course, he has ties to China. He is Chinese. He was born and grew up in China. He was educated in China. He got a bachelor's degree from Chongqing University, and he has published over 180 scientific publications. He then received his doctorate from Princeton University and worked in Notre Dame after graduating. He's such an expert in his field that he was appointed the Miller Associate Professor of Kansas University and was involved in research over there. So what was his crime, you might be asking? If he wasn't a spy and if he wasn't an IP thief, he had no connections whatsoever to Chinese military and wasn't privy to any military secrets. What could he have possibly done that was so wrong? His crime was that he had been offered a position to teach in Fuzhou University and had failed to disclose this offer when he applied for funding from the U.S. government for completely unrelated work in his own field. Even Wikipedia, which I hate citing, suggests that this was a setup, caused when a jealous rival missed out, and I quote here from Wikipedia, the evidence used by the Department of Justice was obtained after Tao was reported to the FBI for alleged espionage by a vengeful co-author who presented manufactured evidence to the FBI. Based on this evidence, the FBI obtained a search warrant Tao was subsequently indicted for an email regarding a contract to teach in China, end of quote. It is really hard to imagine how a request that was made by his home country to teach could have created so much devastation. However, he was initially charged with 10 felonies. That was then reduced to four, and he was convicted in 2022 on all four counts by a jury. After that, on appeal, he was exonerated on three of the four counts, but his conviction for making a false statement on a form was upheld. Now, this is hardly a serious crime, but the Department of Justice still wanted him in prison. Fortunately for him, the judge disagreed and said that his time had already been served and that that was enough. He had spent a week in custody in early days of the investigation. So we're not talking about spying, remember? We're talking about what at worst might have been a deliberate effort 
to avoid disclosing information. But that's, that's just an assumption. But even that has finally been thrown out. And after a six-year nightmare involving several court hearings, two appeals, a week in prison, and a cost of a million U.S. dollars in legal fees, the appeals judge has thrown this out as well because there was no evidence offered that his failure to disclose the information had caused anyone any concern. In fact, he had received an email offering him some work in China. He had not accepted the work. He had not been paid for the work. He had not received any interim payment, nor had he received, let alone signed, a contract or anything to say that he would do the work. He had not traveled to China to discuss this work, nor had anyone traveled to the U.S. to discuss it with him. In fact, he was charged, convicted, and spent time in prison simply because he was Chinese and because someone in China has sent him an email. It's that bad. Now, in another well-known case, a Chinese-born and educated professor, Mr. Chen Gang, was exonerated without having to go through the entire process. He was charged with receiving $19 million from China, but the case fell apart when MIT, where he was a professor, told the FBI that it was them, not the professor, who had received the money. How could the FBI have gotten this so wrong? The only way they could have gotten it so wrong was to have not been interested in evidence, but more interested in making China look bad. And for months, when this was going on, the media were full of allegations of China spying, China infiltrating, and China stealing. But now, the truth has come out. That was all a huge lie peddled from these media. Not one single conviction has been upheld from more than four years of FBI and Department of Justice investigations. Not a single one. In 2022, in perhaps one of his more lucid decisions, the Biden administration decided to close the China Initiative. Although Christopher Wray, head of the FBI, still says that China poses the most serious threat to national security and IP theft. His entire FBI, assisted by the Department of Justice, have yet to gather enough evidence for a single conviction that an appeal judge will uphold. So next time someone tells you that China is guilty of IP theft, ask them to point you to a single court case where this allegation was turned into a conviction. They won't find that. Until they can do so, China is innocent and no one is proving them guilty. All right, friends, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing. Make sure to leave a comment. Make sure to give it a share. And if you want to support the work that I do, make sure to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee or use the QR code on the screen. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now. Oh, and remember, I now have a Spanish channel where I cover the exact same topics and a few more. So if you're more comfortable in Spanish, make sure to go there and check it out. Fermuve en Español. China para ti. All right, guys, that's it for today. See you next time.